All right, guys, so I've got a couple of watches here from Stratton. So I'm going to be doing a review of both of them in this video. So something a little bit different. I'll try and keep it on. It's not too long, though. But one of these is a little bit, you could say, special. If you know what I'm on about, you'll probably know what one of these is. But I've been trying them both out for a while. So I had them in on loan. Don't get to keep them, but either way, you know the score. It's not going to change the way I do my reviews. going to keep it 100% honest all the time, no matter what. So question is... Which one of these are you going to like? Which one of these do I prefer? Let's jump right in and find out. So here's what it came in for me. Obviously, if you buy the one watch, you won't get this, but I'll probably pop up on screen the packaging you'll actually get it in. But I know they do sell these separately. And if you've got a few watches, it's definitely a nice option. And then we've got two watches that come in here. And again, really nicely finished if you do want to pick one of these up. But we'll pop this to one side and then we'll get right down to the watches. So first up we've got the Synchro, and then if you're not keen on this green colour, they actually have a couple of other different ones. So they also have it in purple and red. So some interesting colour choices there, not your usual blacks and silvers and stuff like that. So I do quite like that. It's always good when brands are doing something a little bit different. So let's get a zoom in and let's take a look at that dial. So you can see we've got applied indices there. And then we've got that date window down at the 6. The frame around it, again, matching the indices with that silver. Really nicely finished hands, catching the light nicely. Got loom in them too. Then when it comes to the other hands, got that chrono hand in orange, and then the matching sub dials have also got orange hands as well. And when it comes to those sub dials, they're just printed, so nothing applied there. Then we've got that mini track around the outside, and again we've got orange with the tachymeter, just tying it in with the orange on the hands, complements it well, works nicely. Then we've got the Stratton logo at the top, and then just above that date window we've got the 200 meters, 660 feet, and the fact that it's a chronograph. Let's talk about the rest of it. So when it comes to the case, it's more or less fully brushed, just there's some polished details on the edge of the case. Which is really nicely done. Nice little touch. And the same with the bezel as well. So it's mainly brushed with little polished details in between. So it just adds a bit of interest. So it's not just completely brushed. Do you like that? And then you can see we've also got a sign crown there. And then the pushes are just plain. When it comes to the strap, it's a pretty interesting one. So we've got some really nice large cutouts on that. And again, we've got the matching orange to match the dial, accents, and the hands. And then the rest of it is obviously green to match the dial. Nicely finished. Genuine leather. When it comes to the buckle, got the signed strat in there. And again, just brushed. But I do really like this strap. It does go with the watch really well. And you probably quickly saw as well that case pack. Looking back around to the front, let's quickly talk about the dimensions on this before we go any further. So I'll pop these up on screen. So we've got a diameter of 44mm, got a thickness of 14.9mm, so it's pretty thick. Lug width is coming in at 22mm, and then the lug to lug is 49.9mm. So Right about on the limit of what I'd be wearing for my 7 inch wrist. So it's just below that 50mm, which is what I'd consider the max for my 7 inch wrist. When it comes to the crystal on this, you can see we've got a nice dome on there. So a nice bit of distortion. And that is actually sapphire crystal as well. And also, that bezel is actually sapphire too. Which is not something you see that often, so that is a nice touch. Speaking of the bezel, it's a 120 click as well. It's got a nice action to it. There is a tiny bit of back play, a little bit of bounce, but not too bad. And it does feel really nice, the action, as I say. And it lines up perfectly, so no issues there. Quickly show you the movement in action as well. So start with the chrono, so push that top one. Chrono hand starts, push it again, Stops, bottom one, reset, 
and it snaps back. When it comes to the crown, it's got a screw down crown. So if we unscrew that, pop it out once, you can change the date, pop it out again, move the hands. Pop it back in. You probably also notice we've got a bit of AR coating on this. But there is a decent amount of AR on, on there, so it does work well. Before we show you the other watch, I'll quickly show what the loom's like on this one. So I've got a little bit there already, but let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So you can see, we've actually got a loomed bezel on this as well, which is a nice touch. It's pretty cool the way it's done as well. Wasn't expecting that when I first tried this out, so that was a nice bonus. Although it does fade fairly quickly, that bezel. But the hands, as you can see, are a little bit brighter than the indices in the bezel. It's got C3 on this. The hands last a good amount of time. The bezel, as I've said, fades fairly quickly. The indices, because they're quite small, not a lot of area for loom, also fade a little bit quicker than the hands. So it's not the best loom, but given the style of watch, it's not too bad. Definitely not terrible. It is just about usable. So I'll quickly show you what this is like on wrist before I show you the next one. So this is what it looks like on my seven inch wrist. And as I said, just about in the right size to fit my seven inch wrist when it comes to that lug to lug under that 50 mil. And it is an interesting looking piece. I do like it quite a lot. Yes, it's quite thick, but I think it just about works. And lots of surfaces on there to catch the light. Those hands, the indices, that sapphire bezel, the sapphire crystal. And I do like this strap as well, especially with the weather we're getting in the UK at the moment. Really breathable, so I do appreciate that. And it's just a really nice strap as well. Really soft, really comfortable, nicely finished. So you're probably wondering how much does this cost? So it's $499. And again, that's for the Mecha Quartz, the VK64. So I don't think it's too bad a deal. It's definitely on the top end of what I'd want to be paying for a Mecha Quartz, I think. But I think for the overall design, I think it's not too bad. Pretty good price. But let me know, what do you think? Would you be picking one up? If you are, which colour would you go for? So it's time for something special. So as you probably figured out, this is the Stratton Special. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know this is one that I've had my eye on for quite a while. It's kind of my grail watch. I really, really like these. Something a little bit different, which I do appreciate. But it's one of those I think you're either going to love or hate. So there's a couple of different movement options with this, as well as a couple of well, a few different dial options. So you can get this yellow one, you can get a blue one, you can get a purple, there's one that's all brown, but then there's also one that's brown with off-white. That brown with the off-white, that's the one that I'm probably going to try and get at some point. But I'm probably going to have to shift a few watches before I do that. And that's because this isn't that cheaper watch. So for this particular version, this has actually got the value 7750. So, not a movement you see in cheaper watches because it's quite an expensive movement. So the price of this one is $1,199. But, before you click off, they actually have a cheaper Mecha Quartz version. That's got the VK67, and that one is coming in at $499. So a pretty significant price difference between the two. And there's a couple of little differences in terms of the actual watches. 
The main one being is that this one has the day date complication, whereas the Mecha Quartz version doesn't. And then there's also a difference when it comes to the dimensions as well. So let's talk about those dimensions now. So we've got a diameter of 42mm, got a thickness of 15.6 on the style shoe movement, but if you get the Mecha Quartz one, that one's only 13mm thick. So a pretty sizable difference when it comes to the thickness there. So that might be the deciding factor for a few people, because this one might be a bit too thick, as well as being a touch on the expensive side. But I guess it comes down to what you prefer. Do you want that value movement, that automatic movement with the day-day complication? Or are you happy with the Mecha Quartz for, as I say, quite a considerable amount less? And then the lug to lug, this one's an interesting one. So the lug to lug is actually 40.8. So it's actually smaller than the diameter, which is not something you see all that often. So it is interesting, but again, that's because it's an interesting case shape and design. So seeing as we're talking about it, let's talk about that case a bit more. So as I said, this Valju movement is on the chunkier side, but it is a really interesting case shape. Not something you see all that often, which is part of the reason I do like it. And then got a sign crown there, pushes on, nice detailing on it as well. And it's a fully polished case, but as you can probably tell, there's not a single mark on this. That's because it's got an anti-scratch coating on it as well. And it is working really well. Because this is a review piece that's been around a bit. I'm not the first one to have it. And it's still absolutely spotless. You can also see there, we've got a nice bit of distortion on that crystal. And again, this is a sapphire crystal on this one. And again, it is ever so slightly domed. And then when it comes to that dial, it's going to zoom in and show you that in more detail. So this one, we've got that yellow sunburst. Which does look good, but again, not the one I'd be picking. I'd probably be going with the brown with the off-white. But the blue also looks good too. But let me know, which one do you think is the best looking? Then we've got those sub-dials, which are actually slightly recessed. And then the outer section is applied. And as I said, we've got the day-day complication on this one. And then we've got that Stratton logo and Stratton text just above it. And then automatic just below that. And as I say, the Mecha Quartz one doesn't have that day-date. You could probably see as well, that chrono hand is actually slightly misaligned. So, that is a little bit worrying, given the price of this watch. But, as I say, this is a review piece that's been around quite a bit, so that may explain that. But I'll show you that in action now. And then we activate that chrono. And we got that lovely smooth sweep, because it's an automatic chronograph movement. And obviously, press it again, stop it, bottom one, resets. Again, slightly misaligned. So when it comes to these sub-dials, the one at the top, that's a 30 minute chrono. The one at the nine, that's the second hand. So you've got your sub-second hand there. And the bottom one, that's actually a 12 hour counter for the chrono. And then we've got that lovely sloped minute track around the outside. Again, really cool look. Plenty of depth to this. So they're definitely making the most of that thickness. And as I say, if you're not that keen on that, the quartz version is a little bit thinner. So when it comes to the strap, really nice strap on this. Rally style strap, nicely finished. And again, depending on which watch you get, you'll get a matching strap for that. And then we've got the same strap and buckle brushed again. And again, just really nicely finished. When it comes to that case back, it's actually a pretty nice one as well. Kind of inspired by cars. We've got that speedo on there. And then you've got the special at the bottom. When it comes to the specs, you've got them all right on the other side. 100 meter water resistance, Stratton. And then the fact that it's the Valju 7750. So now I'll quickly show you what the loom's like on this before I show you on rest and we wrap this up. So you can see we've got a little bit there already, but let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So, as you can see, pretty good loom. We've got C3 on this. Although those indices and hands are all quite slim. 
so they've not been able to get all that much loom on them but for the size they are it's pretty good obviously it doesn't last as long as a diver but that's not the kind of watch this is you don't really expect the loom to last all that long but for the kind of watch it is it's pretty good pretty impressive no patchiness at all and consistent across the hands and the indices so this is what it looks like on my seven inch wrist and as i said with that really compact load to look it does wear really nicely and as i say it is actually shorter than the actual diameter which is unusual for a watch not something you see a lot often but again that's another reason i really like this it's just something you just don't see something completely different yes it's quite chunky if you're not that keen on that you definitely want to be going for the quartz the mecha quartz version because there's a few mil thinner but i personally don't mind it with the shape of it it's not too angular not too boxy so i think it works and again really comfortable strap I do like this suits the watch perfectly been really impressed with that anti-scratch coating on that polish case because i was worried it was going to scratch up but as i say this is a review piece and there's still not a mark on it so that works really really well you got that lovely sunbo style and you get that with all of the different colors i guess it's going to come down to whether you like this overall design or not but as you can probably tell i really love it so the only question for me is am i going to pick one up i do really like it but I should probably mention there is a slight issue with this Valjoux movement. Let's see if I can get it to come up and show you. So we've got a little bit of rotor wobble there. You could probably hear it, possibly even see it ever so slightly. So something to be aware of. Might be something that puts people off. For me, I can deal with it. If you don't like that, you definitely want to go for the Mecha Quartz one. But let me know down in the comments. Do you like this design? Is it something you'd go for? If you do, would you be going for the Mecha Quartz or do you think the value is worth the extra? Hopefully you enjoyed this double review here guys. Hopefully it's not been too long. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.